The collision model addresses how and why particles react and how various factors affect reaction rate. Under applicable conditions, the reaction rate for a given system will increase when temperature increases. And the reason for that is that with increased temperature you have faster moving particles, more collisions per second, more energetic collisions, which means that the activation energy is exceeded more often, all of which lead to a higher reaction rate. Similarly, the reaction rate for a given system will increase when reaction concentration increases. The more reactants you have, the faster the rate. The reaction rate will increase when the reactant surface area increases. For the surface area to increase, the particle size decreases. A powdered solid has much more surface area than a big chunk of solid. And finally, the reaction rate for a given system will increase when the extent of reactant mixing increases. In other words, all of these boil down to the same thing, and that is more reactant particles can interact. Let's illustrate a few of these points with an analogy of a junior high dance. Under various conditions, how many dancing couples will we count 30 seconds after starting a slow song? Let's just pretend. We're going to start with 50 boys and 50 girls. The boys are at one end of the gym. The girls are on the other side of the gym. We're going to cue the slow song, start the timer, and 30 seconds later, we count 12 couples that are dancing. Let's do the same thing, except instead of 50 of each, let's put 200 of each. Again, at the opposite ends of the gym, cue the slow song, start the timer, and 30 seconds later, we stop and count up dancing couples, and sure enough, there are more dancing couples than there were before. In other words, when the reactant concentration is higher, the rate is going to be higher. Let's try a third case. Suppose we have 200 boys and 200 girls, but this time, instead of being at opposite sides of the gym, we're going to pre-mix them. So we're going to mix them there in the center of the gymnasium. They're kind of standing around looking at each other like, why are we here? Then we cue the slow song, start the timer, and after 30 seconds, we freeze frame everybody, and we count up how many couples, and there are more, 135. And that's because more particles are able to react with each other because they're pre-mixed. In the same way, reactants that are well mixed are going to tend to have a higher rate of reaction, and whenever there's a high concentration of reactants, you'll have a high rate of reaction. Let's discuss this energy diagram. In particular, a new term for my class at this point is the activated complex, which is the temporary arrangement of atoms between the reactant arrangement and the product arrangement. On this energy diagram, we have the reactants, which we've got formulas for reactants, and we've got formulas for products, but what happens in between. Well, that's called the activated complex, and it occurs right there. If we can imagine this, let's say our reactants look something like this, and our products look something like what we have in the lower right. You can see that we still have two red circle atoms, one blue square atom, and one green arrow atom. What a shock! The number of atoms that we start with and their type and the number of atoms that we end with and their type are exactly the same and they're bonded to different atoms at the end compared to at the beginning. The activated complex could look like any number of things but it might look like what I've shown at the bottom of the screen where for an instant all four of those atoms are like in one clump and then break into the final product form. So that's what we mean by activated complex. It's the temporary arrangement, and when we say temporary, we mean like really temporary arrangement of atoms between the reactant arrangement and the product arrangement. 
All right, let's talk about delta E, which I've circled on the diagram here. You can see it on the left. That is the difference in the internal energy of the reactants compared to the products. And delta E is positive for endothermic processes and negative for exothermic processes. This diagram shows the products having less energy than the reactants, so this is an exothermic process. If we could modify this graph such that it looked like an endothermic process, we would draw the products up here higher than the reactants. The other thing about the change in internal energy is that it has no effect on the reaction rate. No matter how big this delta E is or how small, we can gather from that no information as to how fast this reaction takes place. A catalyst will lower the activation energy, is not consumed, and causes a reaction to speed up. And the reason the reaction speeds up is because the activation energy is lower. For a reaction to occur, collisions must take place with particles oriented in a certain way. In other words, it's not enough that particles have enough energy. They also have to collide in the right orientation. For example, let's pretend that we have this reaction. If the two particles that are reactants collide like that, look at our products. Our products have Cl2 and NO. Now look at the collision that I've drawn in the lower left. Does it look like that will result in a Cl2 being produced? And the answer is no. So even if they have enough energy, those two particles, if they hit in that orientation, are going to do this. Doop. No reaction. But if those same two particles hit like that, can you now see how we're going to produce, probably, a Cl2 from that, assuming we collide with enough energy, reactant particles have to not only have enough energy, they have to collide with the right orientation. This means that only a small fraction of collisions result in a reaction occurring. For pounding in a nail, not only do we have to hit it hard enough, but we have to hit it properly. And if either of those conditions aren't met, we're not going to drive the nail in effectively. Let's summarize. The collision model explains how and why particles react and how reaction rates are affected by variables. The activation energy, E sub A, is the energy barrier that must be overcome for a reaction to occur. A catalyst lowers the activation energy, thereby increasing the rate. While the activation energy affects rate, the degree to which a reaction is exothermic does not. That is, a reaction that releases a large amount of energy does not necessarily proceed at a higher rate than does a reaction that releases less. To react, particles must hit with the proper orientation.